Every one of us seems to be extremely busy nowadays. We don't even have a few minutes of me time for ourselves. The very important and quality time that we can spend alone with ourselves. It's a time for solitude. There's a moment that we can reboot our mind and discover our inner self. Well, after a recent conversation with a friend of mine, I've decided to remove the word busy from my life. It began by asking me how I was. And I answer back quite typically. Well, I'm fine. Just that I'm super busy nowadays. So how about you? And he answered back. Why then everyone is just so busy this day? I remember six years ago, during my first posting as a houseman in pediatric department, it was a terrible nightmare for me. As a newbie, I need to go through a two to four weeks time of tagging period. Every morning as early as 6 a.m., I will need to be in hospital to prepare all my cases, to examine patients, and continue with all the walk rounds and walk work. By the time I have completed all my tasks, it's usually late night. Sometimes approaches 12 midnight or even 1 a.m. Everything was so new to me. I don't know how to use the computer system. I don't know how to clog a case. I don't know how to present a case properly. And I don't know how to grow blood from the patient. But the only thing that I know is every day is a busy day for me. I have basically no life at all. I also realized that the things that I learned in medical school is actually very, very different when I try to apply in real life. I remember there's one night during my night duty, the nurse suddenly shouted. A little girl was spitting. I quickly rushed to the bedside, trying to apply whatever knowledge I had learned before. But I was so panicked, and I just stood there without knowing what to do. In the end, I get scolded by my superior, of course. And I was insulted in front of everybody. I remember the phrase she said to me, You are hopeless. I was so demotivated at that time. I tried my best to adjust myself. But I just can't cope with the stress of work. The long working hours, almost 12 to 14 hours per day, and also the stress from my boss. In the end, I fall into depression. I started to question myself, what is my purpose to become a doctor? Am I a competent doctor with all the emotional breakdown and depression? I can't cope with the hectic work work. I'm having difficulty dealing with patients. I'm afraid of communicating with them. So, how can I be a doctor? I study so hard, but for what? So throughout this year, when I was a medical officer in anesthesiology department, uh, working in intensive care units and also operation theater, especially in intensive care units, every day dealing with life and death events, every day busy managing all the critically ill patients, but there are still a lot of patients which I can't manage to save their life. Busyness had blinded me to realize the limitation of a doctor. I question myself again. A doctor is to save people's lives. But why then? There are still so many patients dying every day in ICU. If I can't manage to save their life, why am I become a doctor? I began to write a lot of articles, I trying myself, trying to convert all the emotions and feelings into words. The more I write, the more I realize that with the knowledge, skill, and theories alone, medicine is still not complete. There's still a big gap 
to be filled. But filled with what? Last year, I had my new book, E Sheng So What, English known as uh, e, uh, Doctor So What, published last year, which gave me an opportunity to have an interesting dialogue with my readers in BookFest Malaysia 2016. Excessive medical interns, or more commonly known as housemen in Malaysia, is a critical issue worth noting. And there's a lot of, there's still many of medical graduates out there who are remaining jobless until today. If you are considering signing your daughter, your son, or even yourself up for a medical degree program, do you know what to anticipate? In fact, if you are genuinely interested in the field of medical science, you should never be restrained by the or by all the uncontrollable and fractious matter. Because the system is constantly changed and revised, we can hardly tell what is going to happen after five years. Instead, we should concern ourselves on building our self-worth. We all learn similar uh, content at school, no matter which school you or I attended to. With the, with the only condition, which is, if we are willing to put in effort and hard work to learn, we will be able to understand all the theories and technical knowledge. But, this leads us to the actual problem here. How do we actually learn something that we can only learn outside of the classroom? To learn something different from others and to make me the outstandingly successful one. Ladies and gentlemen, you or I will have been through the systematic education system, especially in Malaysia, from kindergarten all the way up to university. We never really got to choose what we want to learn. However, we are being paid place together with our peers to be schemed to choose and learn what is ought to be learned. We are therefore very much used to the life of sharing and benchmarking against our peers. When our life in medical school is often overwhelmed with all the subjects such as, such as anatomy, physiology, microbiology, pathology, clinical skill and so on, we are very much, we are really overwhelmed by all these things. We already spend almost 100% of our time together with our peers. This interdependency habit has actually made us to forget about the importance of being alone. And the immersion in collective life has actually made us to overlook the importance of vanity. We never really being encouraged to spend time with ourselves. We are not being taught to do so. We should know that being alone is not lonely. It is just to empty ourselves from all the overwhelming thoughts, to drown out the chatter on mind, and also to focus solely on our self-being. Reflecting in solitude is an art. If we are able to manage our wild life, wild mind, we will be able to foster a deeply present and mindful self. We should listen and communicate with our own self. The inner dialogue may actually lead us to discovering clarity in our own marriage of thought. Well, doctors deal with people from all walks of life. Does a person, a doctor, personal experience of life shape what kind of doctor he is? A doctor who focuses, pay attention to the veins of arm while shaking hands with his friend, or a doctor who constantly talks about his patient in all friends and family gathering, or a doctor who turns against his best friend for his self-interest, what kind of doctor they are? how empathetic they can be, how compassionate they are being a doctor. 
in the life, in the field of medical science, by which the life of people is being trusted to the doctor. Being observant and analytic is equally crucial as knowing the technical knowledge and the theories. So, being observant is important. Being analytic is also important. But when we graduate, we have successfully fulfilled the fundamental requirement to be a doctor. The paper does make us to be a doctor, and it only makes us a doctor. However, in real life, we need to be more than that. When we take off our right robe, try playing a different role. When we put ourselves in other people's shoes, we are leveraging diversity through seeing things from different perspectives and understanding issues with different interests. It will then, we will then be rewarded with a fruitful discoveries. At the present, we have too many smart and capable doctors. What we really, what we actually lack of are doctors who uphold integrity and well-cultivated in virtue. If you are compassionate and empathetic individual, you are definitely the preeminent doctor. I've learned that to be a doctor, we need to be a mindful individual. If our profession is being taken away today, what do we left with? I remember last year I wrote an article. It's about, it's a real story about a Bangladesh gentleman. He's actually a pharmacist back in his country. But when he comes to Malaysia, he's a construction worker. So, what we learn today might not be applicable in the future. Your professional today, your profession today might change in the future. The important thing is how you live your life. When you are busy in trying your best, yourself very hard to improve your knowledge, let's learn to live a wonderful life. This is because the problem in the textbook can only solve with the knowledge where we learn in our classroom. But to solve the problem in our life is very much relies on the lesson that we learn in our life. So today, let us try to slow down our pace and movement in our life. Let us reflect ourselves in solitude to synchronize our unique life experience with our profession. It will lead us to a surprising outcome. And you will notice that the gap that I mentioned earlier will be filled out automatically. Today I question myself again. What is my purpose to be a doctor? A doctor is not just to save people's life, but to touch people's life. Thank you.